The kart racing genre is a pretty tough nut to crack on a Nintendo console. The fact that Mario and his pals quite enjoy a little jaunt around the track on occasion almost makes the need for any other kart racers redundant in some fans' eyes. So what hook has All Star Fruit Racing got to try and win the hearts and minds of Nintendo Switch owners? Well the clue's in the title really, it's based around fruit, yep, fruit. So is this more Pink Lady or Granny Smith? Let's find out. Hi this is Glenn at SwitchUp, thank you for joining us and many thanks to the developers for today's review copy. All Star Fruit Racing is of course a kart racing game and follows many of the tropes that have been staples of this genre since Super Mario Kart popularised it during the early 90s. You choose your racer and then participate in a variety of cup competitions that usually consist of four different tracks. Points are awarded for your final finishing position and an overall winner is declared at the end of the competition. Winning a competition will unlock new races, new islands and parts to customise your vehicle with. The tracks are all fruit related and cover a lot of the standard regions that seem to make their way into most games. These include ice and snowy regions, jungles, mountains, villages and meadows and these are all included under the headings of the seasons. The track design is decent enough with most tracks having a shortcut or two included but they are fairly bland in all honesty. There is no real connection to the fruit motif other than there being fruits growing at the side of the track. Perhaps a track or two where you race along, I don't know, an orange peel or kareem at top speed around a banana would have just added a little bit of invention to proceedings. There is a track similar to this funnily enough but you drive down a giant snake which seems a bit odd when they could have used that fruit connection. Talking of invention, the game's item and weapon mechanic is probably the most original part of the game. You have four fruit tanks that you fill up by collecting the corresponding fruit icons as you race. Filling one of these will unleash the power-up relevant to that fruit, be it a speed boost or a projectile, but filling up more than one will combine these power-ups together. Filling up all four unleashes your character's special move. You can also disengage some of the tanks so for example, perhaps you have a speed boost that you wish to save for later in the race. We'll then disengage that tank and then use the other three until ready. This is actually quite an interesting system to be fair and does just add a little bit of freshness to what is usually quite a by the numbers formula in most kart races. The races themselves seem to run quite slowly and there is the problem of rubber band AI being where the computer controlled cars seem to catch up no matter how well you race at times. As well as the cup competitions, there are fast races which are elimination style events. There's four player, local multiplayer, as well as online racing. Now I did try to test the online for the purposes of this review, but unfortunately the online lobbies were empty. Considering that this game came out a couple of weeks ago in Europe, this doesn't seem to bode well for any sort of long term online future for this game. As mentioned already, you can customise your cart by changing various aspects as well as the colours. This is quite a nice feature and adds a little replayability to the game as you attempt to unlock more parts. The gameplay is incredibly derivative and, bar the power-up system, doesn't really do much to distinguish itself from the crowd. It receives 13 out of 20. The graphics are also pretty average in all honesty. They look okay at first glance but on closer inspection they are very uninspired. If you watch the characters faces as they cross the finish line they have absolutely no character, they just display kind of dull lifeless eyes and very little emotion and it's details like this that give kart racers their charm and this one just misses the mark. The fruit theme is also a little odd and I would have thought for all the world that this was a licensed game for fruit pastels or chopper chup lollies or something like that. In fact the most positive thing that you can say about the graphics is that they are very vibrant and colourful, but then so are my four year old's paintings to be fair. In terms of presentation, the game is again hit and miss. During loading screens, the game helpfully bestows fruit related facts upon you. I now know that the bounciest fruit is actually the red cranberry. What's that? You want to know how many varieties of apples there are? Right. Things on the buzzers. <laughs> um, okay. There are over 7,000. Knowledge, yeah? 
But then, in other areas, such as the trophy presentation screen, after completing an event, everything just looks quite amateurish. The audio is of quite a similar vein to the graphics. Its music tracks are okay, although nothing special. <laughs> and the limited voice acting is a little cringeworthy. Graphics receive 12 out of 20 and audio also receives 12 out of 20. In all fairness, the controls in All Star Fruit Racing work fairly well. The left stick controls your cart and the ZR button is your acceleration. The A, B, X and Y buttons are how you disengage each of your fruit tanks should you wish to, with one assigned to each button and clicking down the right stick will deploy your power-ups. Holding down the ZL button will see you perform a power slide or a drift, and this was probably the most awkward part of the controls. It worked okay with a little practice, but it didn't feel anywhere near as natural as games such as Mario Kart or Ridge Racer. Controls receive 15 out of 20. In terms of value, All Star Fruit Racing costs a fairly eye-watering £34.99 or $35.99. For this price you get around 20 tracks, the cup competitions, elimination modes and local and online multiplayer. This is by no means a bad amount of content, but the game just does not feel polished enough to warrant such a high price point. The lack of charm and animation on the smaller details is really felt when you consider the price, and I can't help but feel that they've shot themselves in the foot a little bit here. This price puts the game pretty close to Mario Kart 8, which is a battle this game just won't win, and it also puts it well ahead of the other kart races on the eShop, which are about £25 cheaper. If you are interested in this game, it's probably worth trying to get the physical version, which I've seen for about £10 cheaper than its eShop counterpart. Value receives 10 out of 20. To conclude, All Star Fruit Racing is a fairly average kart racer. There is nothing inherently wrong with it, although I have heard some people mention running into glitches, but I didn't have this problem I must say. It just doesn't do anything particularly brilliantly either. If you really enjoy kart racing games or have seen everything there is to see on Mario Kart, then this could well provide some enjoyment, especially to younger children. But I would advise you to wait for a sale on the eShop or try to seek out the physical version for a much cheaper price. All Star Fruit Racing gets a switch up score of 62%. Many thanks as always for watching, please remember to leave a like if you like what you've just seen and heard and do consider subscribing for all things Switch all the time here at SwitchUp and as always ladies and gents, happy gaming.